It's a beautiful day outside, so I thought we'd do some wrenching on this lovely new build that I just completed. If you want to see it, I'll chuck a little thingy up there or in the description below. Anyway, I got some Shimano MT200s off Amazon. Front and rear levers and calipers and lines for like 60 Australian dollars, so seemed too cheap to be true, but they are a treat. They're working well. But... I need to do a bit of shortening on the cables. So rear one is pretty good, uh, but my front, it's a bit too long, especially because it's attached to the fork, so it never needs to be any shorter or longer, unlike the rear one, which does have to account for a bit of travel. So we're gonna just take out a bit of this length and here's how you do it. So what are we going to need to shorten these MT200 Shimano brake cables? Specifically for this job, we're going to need some Shimano hydraulic oil, the red stuff. We're going to need one of these little funnels with a plunger in it, which stops the oil from dripping out when you pull it back off. We're going to need new plungers and olives. These are BH59s. They're specific uh, to different types of brakes. The MT200 uses BH59s. We're going to need a 2.5mm Allen key. We're gonna need a five millimeter Allen key, a little pick of some description, eight mil spanner, and we've also got some cable cutters to cut the uh, hoses. We've got a set of uh, multi-grips. For me, they are to round the tube again once we've cut it. And also I use a rag with these just to hold the brake line while you're tapping it, tapping the, uh, the plunger or the, um, the little fitting into place. There are specific little tools you can get to clamp the brake line. I don't have one, probably should get one, but I just do this job not very often at all. So for me, being very careful to hold the line with a rag and some pliers is good enough. Just be very careful not to damage the hose or clamp it too tight. But other than that, that should be everything you need to carry out this shortening. Seems like a bit, but it's a very straightforward job. So everything we need to do, we pretty much do just up at the lever. So make sure there's nothing under it that if some brake fluid drops out, it's gonna ruin it because brake fluid can sort of eat through uh, paints and stuff sometimes. Uh, but anyway, other than that, let's get into it. So we're gonna start by just removing this little cover. Usually it just pops off. You might have to give it a bit of a wiggle. We're gonna grab our eight mil spanner and just loosen that off. Now, hopefully that wasn't too tight because we don't want it absolutely done up crazy. But we're just gonna loosen that. You'll notice we don't take out the filler plug or anything yet, because we're gonna hope that there's a bit of vacuum in there that's gonna stop all the fluid leaking out. But definitely have a rag or something on the floor to catch any that does spill out. Okay, screwed that out. Now there shouldn't be too much else holding it in there, but uh, just give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. And you'll see there, hopefully, there you can see the old olive and you've got your little brass insert, your plunger in there. Just gonna see how much I can afford to get rid of it. Honestly, I can get rid of quite a lot because I don't need any slack on this front brake. Make sure if you're doing the rear, you keep enough slack that when you rotate your handlebars fully, it doesn't bind up. But for me, I might just go about there. We'll give it a little bit, but not too much. I'm just gonna grab my cable cutters, chuck them on where I want it, and done. So you can hopefully see after the cut, it's gone a bit out of round. Come on, phone. It's gone a bit out of round, so we're gonna just get some pliers. Just squeeze that a little bit to round it up. looking better and then we're just going to get a little pick and chuck it in there let's get all the crap off the end and make sure it's nice and clean for that barb to go in so now that we've got our hose nice and trimmed and uh, rounded out we're going to stick our barb in there a little plunger start it off it will be very tight so I've got my rag to protect the hose and very gently put it in this part of the teeth so it doesn't over crush it. But you will need quite a firm grip on it. Just be so careful not to damage that hose. 
I'd even recommend having a practice if you've never done this before. But I was honestly barely gripping it then. And it's gone in quite nicely, so you can see it's all flush there now. And we just have to put the barb over it. And then we're going to put it back in. So push that in all the way until it bottoms out. Push your barb in. And then while making sure that tube's all the way in still, start screwing that back in. Grab our eight millimeter again. You'll feel it start to crush the uh, olive in there. You want to go till it takes just a little bit too much tension, but do not go crazy. Grab a clean rag, and give everything a wipe over, making sure to get off any spilt hydraulic ore. We're gonna just loosen this brake lever off and get it a bit more vertical. Get the uh, bleed, bleed hole to the top. We're just gonna snug that down again. Doesn't have to be too crazy, but uh, just enough to keep it up in that upright position. Grab our 2.5 millimeter Allen key, unscrew that, and we're going to make sure that the O-ring comes with it and that we don't lose it because that will mean leaks. Oop, almost lost it. Now take your funnel, same deal, make sure it has the O-ring so we're not leaking everywhere, and going to screw that in. Finger tight's fine. Don't thread it, just screw it in moderately tight so it don't leak. And we want to put in just enough oil to sort of just cover the base. Maybe by, you know, five or 10 mil. That's heaps. Now in theory, all the air is trapped up here. None of it should have really got down to the brake hose. So we just need to keep squeezing it and you'll see bubbles pop up there. Just keep squeezing it. You can't over squeeze it. And that'll force the fluid in there with gravity and all the bubbles will rise to the top. All right, I think we're at that point where I'm still squeezing. No more bubbles are coming out. Looks good to me. So grab a little plunger, pop it in there. Grab a rag just in case, unscrew it. Theoretically, that's clean. You could reuse it. I don't. Not for the sake of a few cents worth of oil. Dispose of it properly. And before you go too far, get that little screw back in. Make sure the O-ring's on it. And you want to snug it up. Pretty much until it stops turning. Don't over tighten it. There we go. I like to get just a little bit of mild soapy water on the rag. Give everything a good clean off. And you're good. Pretty simple little exercise. Just make sure that you don't over tighten anything. Make sure you get all that air out when you do the bleed. And otherwise, best of luck with it. It's a rewarding little thing. It makes a big difference. So good luck. And we'll see you in the next one.